Yep. All right, I got a question for you. Over under, how many how many questions before somebody asks, um, would you rather play two Super Brown or would you rather <laughs> play Tom Brown? Yeah. I'm gonna put it at five. The over under at five. Oh, that's a little generous. Yeah. I should take the under. Take the under. All right. You did. You were right in this one too. No, you were right. Thank you. Quick reminders, the locker rooms are open for each team should you want to do individual interviews and silence your personal devices, whether they be cell phones or iPads. Also, you cannot videotape the press conferences, unfortunately, so you'll need to get that afterwards from NCAA.com.
Kendall, Spencer, get a hold of you. He wanted to check in. Seniors, is that correct? If that's possible, but if not, I can tell them you can't have five. Yeah. Tell them we can have three. They can choose three. Please tell us which three are coming. Okay, he said that they're just going to stand in there and coach, the coach is going to bring all five in there. Shannon, give me the names. Sturgeon, Gardner. And Crane. Crane. This is Jeff. We're moving to number 14, 16, 42, 4, and 41. That is correct. them share. That's really what's going to have to do. mic on.
representing Louisville, head coach Dan McDonald, as well as his five seniors, Alex Chittenden, Shane Crane, Jeff Gardner, Kyle Gibson, and Cole Sturgeon. Coach, would you begin with an opening statement? Sure. Thanks for uh, letting these five seniors come up here and close the season, because uh, obviously we wouldn't be here uh, if it weren't for these five seniors. Um, congratulate Texas. You know, they, they pitched well. They played clean. Uh, they manufactured a run when they had a chance to. Uh, but moving on to the Louisville Cardinals, uh, I'm really proud of this group. This was a, a fun, fun year. And uh, really proud that these five seniors kept the culture alive. We, we lost seven juniors to the draft. We lost our whole weekend rotation. Uh, but there's no time to feel sorry for us, and no one's going to feel sorry for Louisville. Um, these guys wanted to maintain that high level, uh, that level of excellence, and uh, give them a lot of credit. And it was a, it was a, a smooth year, a very consistent year, uh, a fun year. You know, as a coach, uh, you, you have to be thankful. Sometimes you have to stop and reflect. I'm not really good at that because I have a recruiting mind, and I'm always worried about tomorrow. So I need to take a moment sometimes and stop and reflect because what a fun year. This was a lot of fun. So I, I, just, I want these five seniors to be recognized, uh, and I want our kids to hold their heads high because, uh, as we always say, uh, if the season's going to end, this is the place you want it to end. And um, for their efforts, we'll be better off in the future, and uh, we'll be back again, uh, as it says in the end of the movie Gladiator. Uh, you will see us again, but not yet. We'll open the floor to questions. As a reminder, please introduce yourself and your affiliation before asking your question. Here in the front, second row. Uh, Kirk Bowles from the Austin American. Uh, Dan, did you feel Texas was that good, or were you a little snake bit in this game with the errors and some bad breaks? It's just it's baseball. You know, everybody's that good. In Omaha, you know, it's arguably the eight best teams in the country and the eight hottest teams in the country. So uh, when you don't play clean, um, you know, it obviously gets magnified uh, out here. And, um, you know, the value of scoring a run is, uh, is so important that uh, you do your best to try to score a run and <laughs> you do your best to try not to give up a run. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, we just we gave them few too many opportunities early. and put you in a hole and it's not a good feeling um, with the conditions to, to be in a, a hole, two run hole, three run hole. Um, but, you know, other than I thought we had, excuse me, maybe a, a two inning spurt where we, we lost it offensively. Um, I thought for the most part, you know, we really competed. A lot of good at bats, a lot of good swings. Uh, we jumped on some balls. Um, but yeah, we had a two inning lapse there, there in the middle of the game where we, we just, we made it a little too easy on them. They, they got the momentum uh, and we let them roll with it for a couple innings. Next question in the front, Kendall. Kendall Rogers, perfect game. This is for uh, Cole and Jeff. What, uh, you know, you guys are, tend to be a pretty aggressive offense and French was able to kind of keep you out of your game. What, what was he able to do against you guys uh, to kind of keep you from getting something going? Cole, can you open? Um, you know, he, he did a great job of, of pounding the strike zone for the most part. Um, we probably chased some pitches we shouldn't have um, in some big situations uh, with runners on. Um, you know, it was a pretty tight zone today, and we, we probably didn't do a great job of uh, making them work for everything. Made it, made it, like Coach said, made it made it easy on him for, for a few innings. I'd have, I'd have to agree with Cole that, um, you know, he, he did a great job of pounding the strike zone, and then – when he didn't, we seemed to chase some of those uh, bad pitches. So, you know, just a, a bad offensive day on our part. Third row. Yeah, for Kyle, uh, Brian Davis, the Austin American Statesman. Talk about Anthony and just uh, kind of flipping around what these guys are talking about. What what was working for him? What wasn't? Or what, were they just being aggressive at the plate? Uh, I think Anthony pitched great today. I mean, uh, I think the guest on a couple pitches and got a hold of them and got lucky. But uh, other than that, uh, Anthony pitched, he pitched great. Fourth row. Michael McCammon, CardinalAuthorityScout.com. Kind of the same question for you, Coach. Uh, just talk about uh, Anthony's performance on the mound today. 
Yeah, he was uh, or he was really good. You know, those guys that know Anthony um, know what a great job he does, you know, when he's in jams and the ability to strike a guy out and get out of jams. Um, give them credit because they, they got guys on and they, they moved them over and they got them in scoring position. Um, but all in all, I, I thought he, he pitched really well. Um, you know, as we realize we're, we're losing these five seniors, uh, I think we had eight players drafted this year. Uh, and obviously, we'll lose some juniors, man. It's exciting because different from last year, our, our whole weekend rotation comes back. Funkhauser, Kidston, and Rogers, um, and five talented uh, freshmen that contributed a lot, um, and a nice mix of sophomores and juniors. So um, seeing what these five seniors did and kept the culture where it was, I mean, it's a good feeling. I feel really good about where our program's at. Um, with the players coming in and uh, as we as, as we move on to the future. Second row on the left. This is for any of the, the players. Obviously, when you have a week in between each regional and then coming here, you get some time to think about the stuff that's going on. Um, have you had a chance yet to really kind of consider your places in, in Louisville baseball history and, and where you guys stand after making back-to-back -back College World Series? Alex, could you open with this question? Um, I think it's a big deal. Um, but we we kind of expected it. Um, we knew how good we were, and um, we knew we wanted to get back here. Shane, do you have anything to add? I mean, pretty much just what Alex said. I mean, at the beginning of the year, we knew that we wanted to get back here. And last year, you know, kind of left a sour taste in our mouth and uh, had that little chip on our shoulder to get back here, and we did. and didn't perform the way that we wanted to, but uh, I guess it really hasn't hit us yet from what you said, the history in Louisville. It's just, uh, that's pretty much all I can say. Front row on the right. Aaron Fit, Baseball America, Jeff, Kyle. Um, two years in a row, obviously, you, you get here and um, just kind of play a little flat. Any idea why that is? I mean, after the way you played last few weeks, it seemed like you had a lot of momentum, obviously. Uh, what is it about this setting that has kind of um, made you guys come out that way last two years? You know, I'm I'm not, you know, after thinking about the loss the other night, I'm not not real sure if it is the setting that does it. You know, I felt like uh, the other night offensively we did about all we could against Carson Fulmer and the rest of their staff. You know, we just defensively and with pitching had some some bad breaks. So. Um, you know, I, I think part of it is it's just baseball, you know, and, and this is the most unpredictable game uh, there is. So, um, you know, this week uh, didn't go our way. Here on the left in the third row, Eric. Coach, Eric Sorensen from College Baseball Today. Um, after Texas scored their third run, it, the cameras caught you having a really impassioned talk with your team in the dugout. Can you kind of tell us what you said to them at that time in the game? Yeah, I, I challenge him because that's where we kind of lost it offensively. Uh, I thought for two innings, um, and as you know, we we had kicked the ball around a little bit. We made a couple errors. I, I think that third run was the uh, double play error, which just you know really hurt, really frustrated. Um, there's no way we were going to get back in the game with the way the offensive flow was going. So I don't know if the offensive flow led to the the defensive mishaps, but. We just, we just didn't have a lot of momentum right there. Um, we felt like we got him to a point where he might have thrown eight to ten balls in a row. And for whatever reason, we didn't take advantage of that. And then we ran out there on defense and felt like we gave them a run. Um, and so you just tried to regroup, motivate. They know I'm very passionate. Um, they know I care about them. Um, just wanted to spark a fire under them. Um, you know, uh, by no means is it flat. I, I think somebody might have used the word flat. This is, um, this is a passionate group now. This is a competitive group. Um, I don't care if we play dodgeball uh, or ping pong or you name it. I mean, this is a competitive group of kids. We, we wouldn't make back-to-back -back trips uh, to Omaha if we weren't competitive. And uh, I felt better about this group, N no disrespect to last year's team, but just you know, felt comfortable, and and uh, I don't know if any one of the eight teams is coming here not thinking 
they're going to win a national championship, you know. So I'm sure for seven of the eight, uh, it really hurts because you know how hard it is to get here, the road to get here. And, and when you accomplish that road to get here, you feel like man, we're invincible. Um, nothing can stop us. And, and we have great respect for our opponents, but uh, you really believe that you're going to win a, a national championship. And uh, – which just it makes it hurt. You know, it's why kids cry and people get emotional because uh, they wanted more, and that's okay. I think that's I think that's very healthy uh, to want more. I just challenge them. I I still want them to enjoy this. I want them to be proud of this um, because I know how proud their their families are and and their friends and you know the Louisville Card Nation. Uh, it's growing because. Uh, the more we come out here, the more people are familiar with us. So uh, it's fun to see the Card Nation uh, grow. We got time for two more questions. First, here in the second row. Uh, Cole, on the ball that you hit on the nose in the first inning, it turned up to be a double play. How, how deflating was that? And do you feel like that set any kind of tone for the game? Um, I mean, not really. It was the first inning. We, we put some good swings on them. Um, you know, that's, that's all we try to do is just. Put a good swing on it, hit the ball hard. Um, didn't work out. Um, I don't think that really set any kind of tone for the game. Um, I thought we had some good at-bats throughout the game besides that middle stretch. Um, just didn't go our way today. Final question in the back. Yeah, Pat Forzi with the New York Times. This is for Dan. You alluded a second ago to the conditions, and I presume you mean the way the wind was blowing in. It's well known the ball doesn't carry in this park. Um, how do you manage a game from behind when you know that a three-run homer or a three-run double or triple is, is probably not going to be in the cards? I haven't figured that one out yet. <laughs> the, uh, you know, we're down three, and it's first and second, nobody out, and I'm sack bunning. And I think that says it all. All right, like, we'd like to thank Coach McDonnell and the Louisville student-athletes. If I could, I'm just going to close with the same statement I made last year from our left fielder. God is good. God is real good. Thanks, everybody. For individual interviews, please contact the Louisville Sports Formation Director, Garrett Wall, outside of this room. Representing Texas, head coach Augie Garrido, starting pitcher Parker French, shortstop C.J. Hinojosa, and left fielder Ben Johnson. Coach, if you'd begin with an opening statement. Well, the, the, um, the game was controlled uh, from our point of view by the pitching of Parker French and uh, Travis Duke. Uh, then you can't have a well-pitched game without really good catching, and Trace Pereira did a good job with that. And he calls a majority of the pitches, too, which is, isn't always uh, 
what goes on in college baseball, but he's a very mature baseball player and uh, very much a student of the game. And he, he really has a calming effect with his personality on the pitching staff. So he's more like a professional catcher, even as a freshman. And then you go right around the infield and the plays that were made defensively by CJ and his teammates were getting the outs on time. And Parker is a ground ball pitcher uh, with a sinker that you saw working very well today. And he is dependent on trusting the infielders to get the outs on time and make the plays for him. He's not a strikeout pitcher for the most part. Uh, the outfield, uh, Ben had to make probably the, the, the toughest play, and he made it with runners on base to uh, keep it at zero at the point in time with a nice catch over his head. So um, we had the three runs. Uh, they gave us some extra outs. They gave us some extra bases within the framework of the innings that we scored. But we also broke through and had a miracle take place. We hit a sacrifice fly with a runner on third base that scored a run. And so that was the most revolutionary thing that happened today. Um, and I think the rest belongs to the players. Let's open the floor to questions. First here in the third row. Yeah, Augie, Brian Davis, Austin American Statesman. Is playing off that, did you feel like today this was the Texas team you've seen all season? This was the team you expected yes. the whole time up there? Yes, I, I, but I think to play in the first game, that was the fourth time we've been in that game. And it's always a, a game of nerves. The celebration has gone on now from the time they got their invitation, punched their ticket to Omaha. And once you get here, the celebration continues. It's a celebration about what you accomplished and it's easy to buy into that. And it's hard to refocus and get competitive. And I've always disliked playing that game. I didn't tell them till now, uh, but I didn't tell them I liked it either. But it is hard to flip that switch. And I, I think we um, played much better today. Ye yesterday we had a practice, and at the practice, we really weren't practicing baseball skills. We weren't trying to fix anything because it wasn't broken. We were just making sure our attitude and our uh, togetherness and our teamwork and the fun in being together was in the right place. And. Uh, it, it, it was a fun practice, and they had a good time, and they knew they could trust each other, and what we said was play our game, and, and they did. In the second row on the right. Dustin McComas, orangebloods.com for Parker. Was, was this some of the best command you think you've had all year, and was there a point in your outing when you had to adjust and start throwing some more off-speed stuff early in the count? Um, I mean, I think the command was there today. I agree with that, and uh, – I think it was in the middle innings. It was like third or fourth inning. They uh, they were a very aggressive baseball team from the offensive standpoint, and they started swinging at a lot of uh, early fastballs. So I just me and Trace talked about it and said we might want to start mixing it up uh, with the slider a little bit more, just to give them something to think about, make them uncomfortable because their whole game is making the pitcher and the defense uncomfortable. That's how they score runs. So you just got to attack them first before they attack you, and that was kind of our plan. We tried to stay one step ahead of them all day. Next question. Fourth row in the back. Augie, you've got a pretty uh, – Chris Schneider with CBS Radio Dallas. you got a great pitching staff. Yeah. As this tournament goes deeper, do you feel like uh, you guys get stronger since you have so much pitching? I think it certainly gives us a chance. The other thing is uh, all of us in the room know that it's been won several times. This format is not nearly as difficult – to come out and win the whole tournament after losing the first game as it used to be. Uh, it still is challenging and you're one game down, but before you could be two or three games down in the double elimination tournament. And um, so the, the short answer is yes, I think we have a pitching staff that can uh, stand up to the number of games that we have to win uh, to win the national championship. Third row again. Yeah, for CJ and Ben, can y'all just talk about offensively? Uh, don't know if you know, but their pitcher came in with a you know a fourteen and zero record. Uh, was there talk about hey, let's get after this guy, 
and uh, you know look for balls in the zone and, and get going. CJ, can you open for us? Yeah. Um, I mean, he did he did a great job. We um, were able to get to him for three innings straight, I believe. And um, but he did a great job mixing pitches. And there's a reason why he was 14 or no. He mixed pitches. He threw fastballs. He threw his off speed and. Uh, he had us chasing a couple of times, but um, I mean, we, in the dugout, we were just trying to see if there was a pattern, and if there was, then we were trying to pick up on it. Attacking pitches, and uh, I mean, sticking with our game mainly, trying to get the leadoff guy on, move him over, have a chance for him to score with a base hit or two base hits, and it worked out our way for those three innings. Here in the front. Yeah, I think uh, CJ said it best. You know, we wanted to. Get on, get um, on him early. Um, get the leadoff man on. Get him over, and uh, we did a pretty good job of that. For those three innings, we scored runs, and you know we knew that they had a pretty, pretty good uh, bullpen. You know, with Nick Birdie coming in, so we definitely knew we wanted to get a lead going in those last innings, and you know, obviously we did that going in three to one um, in the ninth. So yeah, we did a really good job. Aaron Fit, Baseball America, Parker, um, Coach talked about. You know how important it is for you to, to pitch to contact, let your defense work behind you, and it seemed like those guys were, were pretty locked in today. I'm curious uh, when you see you know CJ making making some of these plays look easy at shortstop that aren't easy. Um, how much confidence does that give you? Um, I think uh, when I step out there every day, um, every game, this is probably the best defense uh, in the country. I can say that with confidence. Um, up the middle, everywhere. So I mean, I come in confident every game. When they uh, start making those plays, it just makes me more of a, I guess, strike throwing machine because, you know, they were going to be aggressive. Why not keep the pitch count down, save the bullpen and let them work and just, you know, worry about my job throwing strikes and let them do their job, which is pick it up and throw it. And they're really good at that. So, I mean, I'm going to lean on them because, I mean, we're a team here. We have a really good team, um, not one guy. And uh, so I'm going to use them every way I can. We'll take two more questions, starting here in the second row. Yeah, uh, Kirk Bowles from the Austin American. CJ and Ben, to that piggyback on that defense question, you made a great play and left. And CJ, you seem to pick up everything come near you. Does Parker French appreciate that? Does he take you out to dinner? What, what does he do to, you know, kind of appreciate that? If you can talk about some of your great plays. Ben, can you open this one? <laughs> well, uh, we have to turn in laundry. He'll take my laundry for me, so uh, he'll do that. But. Uh, yeah, I know he'll, uh, yeah, I don't know, Parker, where are we going during the night? <laughs> hey, that, that's your choice. That's your choice, man. <laughs> yeah, he, he does a good job. From the infield uh, perspective, with him throwing a lot of seekers and um, also with Nate pitching, we got to be ready. Uh, there's going to be a lot of ground balls hit, and as long as you're ready, you're seeing the ball off the bat. And Coach Tommy uh, Nicholson has helped us a lot with our first step and making that a key focus for us because with these guys pitching, there is going to be a lot of ground balls. But, um, I mean, the thing that, that I appreciate most is whenever there is a good play or something that is uh, made th that inning, he, he waits for us. He doesn't just go into the dugout after that inning. He's, he's picking us up. He's saying good job. And, you know, we tell him good job. And that's just part of us being a team and a brotherhood, something that we developed over the year. And uh, I mean, it's, it's awesome seeing your pitcher go out there and throw strikes like that to allow you to make plays. Take our final question. All right, we'd like to thank Coach Garrido as well as the Texas student athletes for joining us. If you have individual interview requests, see Justin Moore, Texas Sports Information outside the room. <laughs>